This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at how to go through the process of migrating file services to Windows Server 2008. Now, we've done some of the prep work and we've talked about the Windows Server migration tools, but now we're ready to put it into action. We'll start here and the first thing we actually need to do is go to our machine that's running Server 2003. Now, this is the machine that we had installed the Windows Server migration tools. And we find those after they've been installed uh, in the administrative tools menu. Now, if you're familiar with that icon, uh, what this is essentially is a special Windows PowerShell prompt uh, that has these different commands loaded in it. Okay, and so if I, you know, with Windows PowerShell, if I ever want help, uh, it really is just a couple clicks away. You can just type help and the name of the actual command uh, that you want. You've got tab completion of your commands. You can always go get command. Okay, now get command is going to give me a, a number of different commands because it's all in it's all in PowerShell. It's the PowerShell commands as well. So I might want to say get me just the commands with the S migration because that's where they would all be. So I could, for instance, say get command S mig with wildcards around it, and I will see that essentially it's these primary PowerShell commands that we are uh, that we're dealing with. Okay? And so the very first thing we need to do is run an export. We're going to simulate having to export a certain group. So S, export SMIG, if you hit tab, it will do the tab completion. Okay? We're going to get all the users and we're going to do uh, groups as well. And the path that we're going to use is we're going to uh, export those out to the C migration folder and then users groups. We'll throw the verbose key on there so or parameter on there so that it gives me the most information. That's going to ask for my current password. That's the administrative password on this machine. Let's go ahead and type that in. And then we see it starts to gather data. So again, you may not actually have to do this, if, but if you've got local users and groups, this would be one of the ways to uh, or the way to export. All right, so we see it exported local users and groups successfully, and users successfully, groups successfully. Let's minimize my remote desktop window here. Now I'm going back over to uh, my file server, or my new, going to be new file server. And we're going to connect to SVR1. This is the machine that's running server 2003. In its migration folder, we've got users and groups, and you've got a, a MIG file there. Okay. So I'm actually just going to copy that file and I'm going to paste it locally in my migration folder okay, so that that is there locally. Now on this server I also have the Windows Server Migration Tools installed. And so I'll, uh, I'll open up that. The icon is slightly different here but basically the same thing. Okay, get command, smig, we're going to be seeing the exact same commands. Well, what do we think we're doing on this one? Well, we exported in the other one. So here, we're going to be uh, importing uh, server migration, server settings, users all, the group parameter, the path parameter, and basically the same thing, but uh, you know, from the perspective of importing it, whoops. If I use quotes, I see I notice I used a quote at the beginning there. That was just kind of habit. And then I need to use a quote at the end too if I'm going to do that. Okay. Once again, asking me for uh, a password and collecting data verbose. So it'll give me, you know, this information actually show me what's happening. It's collecting data and it should then import uh, that information, import those users and groups. Okay. Now this is not all. Again, there are several actual steps to doing this. 
And there's also going to be some different steps depending on exactly what you are trying to export and import and what you are trying to migrate over. And keep in mind, in our case, we're trying to migrate uh, some DFS, uh, DFS settings and, and the like. Okay? So that's collected data. Let's, uh, let's actually, we'll, we'll let that uh, go here. We'll go to Administrative Tools and Server Manager. Just to open up, we're going to need to get into the DFS eventually here. We'll just go ahead and expand that now. Oops. Again, we have, we have no namespaces at this current time. All right, that's still, still importing. So basically, we're kind of at a standstill until we are able to uh, complete this import process, and then we can uh, continue on in our migration. So now this has completed, we can see some verbose output. You, there are some errors. There are some errors because the built-in groups are not going to have been, uh, have been modified. Okay, it's not going to take the administrators group and the account operators. And so these aren't actually, they're not really errors. They're kind of just warnings letting you know what did happen. Okay, now the next one that we need is the receive uh, SMIG server data command. Okay, I know I'm not really typing anything in except for the password for the migration uh, process. And notice now it's going to just say starting. Now starting what? Well, I didn't tell it to do anything. If we read, it says it's opening a connection. Now I go to the source server and I send. So that's really all this command did was it got my new server ready to receive data. So now we will go back over here and we will use the send smig uh, server data. And computer name is going to be the computer that we are sending to. Uh, source path, exactly what are we sending? Well, there's a files directory on our C drive, destination path, a files directory, okay? And we're going to go say recurse, which means basically go through and get all subfolders. And what are we going to include? We're going to include everything. And then we're going to force, even if it has to overwrite, okay? You can find all this documentation in the help files as to these actual commands. And obviously, in a real situation, we would probably be dealing with more directories. But it's the same command. We would just be repeating the, uh, the command. So now that's starting. It collects the information, preparing to migrate that data over, uh, and then would be pushing that data over to uh, file server number two. Okay, server number two waiting. Now it says it's encrypting and sending the data. can take extensive time. Obviously, we're not dealing with a lot of information, so it is complete, all right? So it tells me a list of the files and the folders that it sent in a secure fashion. Let me minimize this. We'll go over to this system, go to the C drive, and notice we actually have a files folder. In the files folder, we got a couple text files. Obviously, that was minimal. Uh, I'm going to right click and say that I want to share this with those specific people and just type in everyone. We'll add them to the list, grant them read, write, uh, and hit share. Okay, because the sharing had to be done there, uh, but on the NT, you know, on the, the the other permissions were actually uh, were actually copied over. Okay, so then I'm also now ready to go in and work with uh, the distributed file system. So we'll go into Administrative Tools and we'll open up DFS Management. This is something that we could do from, uh, from within Server Manager if we wanted to. So on the namespace is here. Uh, we'll right click. Oh, we should be able to refresh. New namespace, oops, excuse me, right here. New namespace to display. In Contoso.com, we'll grab the shared files namespace, and then we've got shared files, and we can simply right-click and add a, a new folder, or I'm sorry, uh, we'll go to files here, and it's pointed at SVR1, we're going to add a new folder target. Okay, so that didn't actually get done, but once we have shared it, we've actually already copied the data from SVR1 to SVR2, 
it's in the files directory, and so now we would just set it up as a, a folder, uh, folder target. Okay. Uh, it's going to ask me then to create some replication options. See, the benefit of what we just did is that I don't need to do any replication. We just use the server migration tools to copy the data, data over. So I don't need to do replications. I'm simply adding as a folder target, and then I would actually remove uh, the old folder target. Now, the final step, if you want, would be to rename the new machine, the destination server, the name of the old one. So we would rename the, the former one, you know, dot old or uh, you know, NYC old or something like that, and still keep it around, but then rename the new server. So it essentially takes the place. We've copied any users and groups. We've copied any data to it. We've changed the DFS namespace to point to that as its primary target. And so while we did it in a limited fashion with just a few files, we have performed a migration for file services from Windows 2003 to Server 2008.